Hello again everyone, welcome to yet another Wilson 18 tutorial. Uh, it's been a while since I've done um, a video and hopefully I'll be doing a lot more within the next few weeks and months. Um, I've got a few more people helping out now so hopefully you should be seeing a bit more variety of the videos. But in this video we'll be talking about how you can make uh, MySQL accessible from an external IP address. Um, and doing that kind of thing. So um, again, this will be on a Ubuntu server 12.4. It will be doable on uh, the desktop version. You'll just have to do it through a terminal, but that shouldn't really be an issue. So when we do this, there's a couple things we need to go through and do. Um, we need to obviously make sure we've got MySQL installed. I won't be going through that because I've gone through that in a different video, but this is assuming you've got that done. Uh, if you've got that done, then you will need to um, change the configuration file so that it starts listening to the outside world instead of only on the internal IP address, um, which we'll be doing. That's pretty simple. That's just a, a case of changing a line in um, a configuration file. And the other thing is making sure that you have a user that is actually accessible from the outside world that only has access to specific tables you want them to. So this is just in case someone manages to break into your database and um, you don't want to give them access to your root user because then they can delete everything. Only give it for specific tables you need them to and the specific database you need them to access. Um, and another obvious thing which you need to do is make sure you've set up port forwarding on your router. Uh, I won't be going through that because there's so many different varieties of routers. There's so many different guides out there for that as well. And it would be the case of I either have to spend time doing thousands of guides for specific routers, which would cost me a hell of a lot of money, or you can just do a quick search and find out how you do it. It's usually pretty simple. So the first thing we need to do is to connect to our server. Um, so the way we do that is, I will be doing that is with putty. So I will go ahead and open that, and one second. Right, once you've got that opened and you've logged in and everything, we are going to be um, changing to the root user. So to do that, we type in sudo su, so that's saying super user do switch user. And that will ask us for the password, we enter the password and we are now logged in as root. The configuration file we need to actually change is located uh, one sec. located in the etc folder in the mysql folder inside that and we'll go ahead and do that. So the editor we're going to be using is Nano. Um, obviously, if you want to use a different text editor, then feel free to do so. You just change that there. Um, but yeah, so Nano, and then etc, and then MySQL, and then my.cnf. So once you click that, you will have your configuration file opened and we need to find down here um, where it says the listening port no, bind address that's it sorry um, so the bind address at present is 127.0.0.1 that is saying it will only listen to connections on the specif on this current machine or on the actual server itself should I say, sorry um, so to change that if you want to make it accessible on a specific no, you won't do that, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so um, what we need to do to make it accessible so that we can access it on a different IP address is change it to 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0. Sorry. Right. And you change it to 0, .0, .0, 0. Right. So what that's going to do is because it's all set to zeros, it means it'll listen to anything. So you can come in on an external IP address, it'll work, you can come into an ex internal IP address and it'd work, and that's fine. Um, if you want to interchange the port, you can do so above, or you can also do so with most routers as well. So you can keep it on the standard port on this 
server. So if you're collect connecting locally, you'll still be using port 3306, I think it is. Um, whereas if you want to connect externally, you can get it to actually so that it has to come in on a specific port, which will then translate that to the correct database port. Um, or you can just leave it open, it's up to you really. But if you want to change the port, um, it mentions about the port here, and it does so uh, above as well. Yeah, just there really. Um, so there and there. But that's it, so um, once you've edited the things you need to, you need to do Control O, which will save it, after you press enter obviously, and then Control X to exit, and once you've done that, you need to type in service, and then MySQL, and then restart, and this will restart MySQL, which is quite simple. And um, the next thing we need to do is we need to log into PHP My Admin, which is usually a pretty simple way of doing it. You can again do it through the terminal, but I'm not going to because it's just so much easier doing it through PHP My Admin. So if you open up PHP My Admin um, and log in, it helps if I type my password in right there. So if you log into PHP My Admin and you should see the following screen, we then need to go to Privileges and we can actually create a new user by this little button here. Again, depending on which version of PHP My Admin you've got or what theme you're using, it might look slightly different, but there should be something very similar to that saying Add New User. If you can't find it, then it's probably best doing a quick Google search and you should be able to find it no problem. So if you click that, you should see the following screen. This is actually um, done so you can change the size of it if you need to for any reason. So here we will be setting um, the username. So um, you can set this anything really, but try not to do anything too obvious. Um, but as I said, for test purposes, I'm going to change it, set it to test. Um, the host is basically what IP address you want it to be. So if you only want local users to be able to do it, you can do it there, or you can set it at any host. This will mean that any IP address can get access to it on any host, machine, blah, blah, blah. Um, and now you need to set a password for the user. Please don't do this and set it as password or something as simple as that, because you'll find that anyone will be able to get access to it, because password is the stu most stupidly obvious password ever. Um, but it's surprising how many people do that. Uh, so yeah, you can set your own password here, or you can actually generate a password. That's probably the most secure way of doing it, but I know a lot of you wouldn't do it that way, because it means that you've got to remember it, or whatever. So if you don't want to do that, then just set your own passwords. So I'm only doing a simple password, that way because um, I won't be using this anywhere other than in this tutorial to show that it works so yeah that's fine if you want to give them access to a particular uh, if you want to give the user their own database you can do I'm not going to be doing so and here are the permissions they are allowed this will uh, mean you can tell them that they can select data, insert data, update, delete and file um, again, I'm not going to go through every single one of these because they're usually pretty obvious. Um, but yeah, only select the ones you need them to gain access to. Sorry. Um, and once you've done that, select them all and click create user. Um, another thing I probably should have mentioned a few minutes ago is if you only want them to gain access to a particular database, you'll actually need to open up the database. Um, and go in and then go to permissions tab and do exactly the same thing we did here um, I'll, sh I'll show you how to do that after this actually just so I'll make sure I've covered it so create the user set the password choose permissions and click create that will do a MySQL query to add that to the database saying hey this person can only access this and do this and blah 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 so that's one example of how you can do it if you wanted to do it for a specific database you'd have to go into the database and then click privileges and create a new user and do the exact same thing here. 
and as far as I'm aware this will only do it so they can only access this database I may be wrong and if I am I apologize but it, that would make a lot more sense to me if it did like that but anyway so um, we've created the user that can now access this file or this database should I say sorry and the next thing I'm going to do and just to prove that it works is to open up something called Navicat um, it's a it's a tool so you can access a database on a different server it, it's very handy um, I definitely recommend getting it if you need to look at databases and things like that on a different IP address you can set it up so you can do it on access um, which is a bit more complicated and I might get, do a tutorial if you com uh, on how you can do that and if you do want to know how you do that then comment below and I'll make sure I do a video simple as that so um, just to prove that this works I've got a connection thing here so um, I need to give it a connection name so I'll say test for example uh, the host name or the IP address so for this I'm going to be setting um, the host name or IP address to 10.0.0.151 which is the test server on my um, network if you've set it up to use a different port you need to make sure you put it here or else it won't work um, you put your user so I think mine was test and you put your password and just to make sure it works you do test connection and it's worked so you know that it works you can connect to your data space you can see everything in it and ta-da it's pretty simple so yeah as I said this was only a quick tutorial to show you how you can access a uh, um, MySQL database on Ubuntu Server 12.4 and desktop version I've done this quite a few times because I need to do it for managing everyone's information which I do for um, working anyway so if there is anything you wanted explaining or you don't particularly understand or you got any requests for um, tutorials then please comment below um, I haven't been able to do many videos lately. I've had a lot of I've had a lot on, but I'll make sure I try and add some more. We've got some more coming on, hopefully, about how to do some programming uh, for Android using um, VB or Basic for Android. Sorry, it's a very useful application that translates Visual Basic into the language for an Android machine or on the Android operating system should I say uh, which my partner will be doing and another partner should hopefully doing, be doing some um, HTML and CSS tutorials hopefully if I can persuade him to do it but obviously if you start commenting below saying oh you give us some more tutorials about this then I can't really say anything but do them can I so make sure you do that. So we've got some Android programming coming along. We'll have some Visual Basic programming lessons. I might do some Python. Hopefully some PHP, HTML, CSS. And um, I think that's it. But as I said, if there's anything you want to learn how you do, then comment below and I'll make sure I get it done for you. So thank you very much for watching. And hopefully I'll see you again soon.